What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome uh, to Ask Donovan. Uh, let's go right to AJ in Bolivia, who thinks I made the right decision to decline Dr. Phil's invitation to go on and, quote, debate him. This is AJ from uh, Malaysia. I think you did a solid move on not attending the debate, uh, Dr. Phil invited. I don't think he's the kind of man debating such a topic. Since you've seen characters like Bad Baby roaming around, love your show. Keep uh, doing what you do, man. Yeah, thanks, uh, AJ. I appreciate that. Yeah, the Dr. Phil invitation invitation to debate that was a no-brainer for me to decline there was absolutely zero upside in doing this now i'm not going to sit here and say that i didn't at the very least think about it because i most certainly did when i thought about the exposure that would come with making an appearance on the dr phil show it was certainly a tempting proposition in that regard as far as exposure goes but as we all know uh, these things are very, very carefully edited, and there is no way on God's green earth that Dr. Phil's team was ever going to paint me in a positive light. Plus, that exposure would have turned out to be a bad thing. The reason for that is because someone would have recognized me. It is the Dr. Phil show. He gets millions of views. Now, at some point, my true identity is going to be found out. It's going to be made public if I keep growing at this rate. It's a mathematical certainty. But by the time I get to that point, I'll be more than ready to handle it. I'll have a team of people. I'll have a publicist and all that other kind of fancy stuff. But if all of a sudden millions of people see my face on national television tomorrow, that level of exposure that quickly, that is something that I am ill-equipped to handle as of right now. Uh, thank you very much for your question, AJ. Before we go to the next question, make sure you get your hands on my free ebook, 16 Ways to Immediately Disqualify Her for a Long-Term Relationship. The book is absolutely free and will help you weed out the girls who will turn your life upside down if you get into relationships with them. Go to donovansharp.com slash newsletter um, and put in your very best email and the book is yours. Okay, let's now go to Anonymous who agrees with AJ that I made the right decision about declining Dr. Phil. Plus, he also wants to know who Devin is. Take a listen. My question is, do you think that Dr. Phil is simply asking you to come on so that he can set you up? Because to me, it sounds like a setup. Number two, you keep on talking about somebody named Devin. Who is this Devin that you keep on going on about? Uh, those are my two questions. Thank you. Anonymous is absolutely right. Uh, this was 365% a setup. And the very first thing that came to my mind when I read the email was Roosh's appearance on Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz invited Roosh to, dis to discuss obesity in America or, you know, whatever BS line they gave him to reduce his apprehension and proceeded to double cross him right before he went on the stage. Now, Roosh knew that he wouldn't be cast in a favorable light. He actually put the, he actually wrote an article about it, how I was backstabbed on Dr. Oz's show. He he lets us know, hey, listen, I know I'm not going I know I'm not going to be uh, cast in a favorable light. Roosh is not an idiot. Roosh is very smart. And even though he was blindsided by Dr. Oz and his staff and portrayed as a monster, which were Dr. Oz's words exactly, he knew that the exposure for better or worse would get a lot more eyeballs on him. And he was right. Um, I was actually a writer for Return of Kings at the time, and traffic to the website, I think it spiked to something like 4,000% or some crazy number like that. So mission accomplished. Roosh strategically took his lashes and managed to come out the other side actually benefiting from the appearance despite being characterized as a monster lurking in the shadows. I am very, very, very good at what I do, but I'm not as smart as Roosh is in that regard, nor do I have the level-headedness that he has. I'm a hothead, guys. It's always the way I've been. And even though I have a lot more self-control these days, I have absolutely zero patience for people who act in such a way that implies that there will be no consequences for their actions. Dr. Phil and his panelists, they would have called me names and they probably would have insulted me. And the reason why they would feel comfortable doing this is because they're in the safety of their own studio with the bodyguards and all the rest of that. And none of those people, not even Dr. Phil, as big as he is, would ever behave this way towards me in public for obvious reasons. I am self-aware enough to understand that I have neither the seasoning at this point nor the wherewithal to control my temper in that environment. I am man enough to admit that yes, I can be emotionally immature at times and that I lack the I lack the requisite control not to physically accost someone in that environment. And make no mistake, Dr. Phil and his staff have done their research. They know who and what I am. This debate 
would have been nothing more than putting me in a cage and poking me with cattle prods to see how angry they could make me and then edit it in such a way that makes me look like this feral animal and then paint me as the face of this angry community. Uh, so yeah, this was obviously a setup. And even though I'm not as savvy as other guys in this sphere in terms of me making media appearances, at least not at this point, I'm not. I'm smart enough to understand that this was a no-win proposition for both myself and this community. Uh, to answer your question, Anonymous, Devin is my girlfriend whom I just promoted to the producer of my show. Uh, let's go to Brandon in Texas, who also has a Dr. Phil question. Hey, Donovan, it's Brandon from Texas. Hey, man, I just had a question. I just wanted to see if, on the show today, if Allegra Hennington actually responded to <laughs> the video that you posted on the email. And if she did, what did she have to say? I think we'd all like to hear. Thanks, buddy. Love what you do. Keep your content coming, man, because it's it's really empowering us men out here. We need it. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the kind words, Brandon. Um, listen, man, I truly love what I do, and I feel very fortunate that I get to help men like yourself uh, live better lives. Um, as far as Miss Hennington is concerned, no, she hasn't responded. She hasn't responded to my decline, and I'd be very surprised if she did. The Dr. Phil show, as you can probably imagine, puts out thousands of these feelers probably every day. And if anybody shows that they're disinterested, it's not really advantageous on their part to respond or ask why they've declined. But, you know, listen, man, I mean, on the off chance that I'm wrong, you'll be the first to know. So uh, so thanks for your question. Uh, let me remind you guys, this Saturday afternoon at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, I will be joined by Terrence Pop in studio for one-on-one -on -one with Donovan Sharp. If you have questions for Terrence, call 702-919-7197. Make sure you specify that your question is for Terrence, myself, or the both of us. If you have a question that you would like me to answer right here on Ask Donovan, make sure you call the number on your screen, 702-919-7197. Make sure you let me know who you are, where you're from, and speak very clearly. Uh, my thanks goes out to AJ in Bolivia, Anonymous, and Brandon in Texas. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.